Hey guys, it's Michael Todd and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. We are in Lewisburg, Pennsylvania and we are back at the Street of Shops. You can see it there right behind me. It is three levels of vintage, antiques, contemporary, primitive. It's got a little bit of everything. You guys, we're gonna get inside, see if we can't find anything for resale, maybe even for collecting. Let's get inside and let's do this. Alrighty guys, here we go. Alrighty guys, well immediately right off of the bat, I was kind of taken by surprise. This area is actually a new area. They had some good stuff. Like this King Kong, they have it mark, marked as a Mark's Toys. He is absolutely amazing. He obviously has some fur wear there to him. And right next door, we've got a lithograph, a little Fred Rubble. No, that's Barney Rebel. Fred Flintstone. Little wind-up toy riding on Dino. That was really cute. Um, they're definitely priced for a collector. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, so we were going to leave those ones behind. Kept them safe and sound behind the glass. Now, obviously, we are in a room... Uh, and it is filled with nothing but cabinets. We have a lot of smalls um, throughout. I will say that the vendors really did seem to take the time to make sure that price tags were out and you were able to see the prices on them. And I greatly, greatly appreciate that. Um, again, we have some more jewelry here. Um, a lot of smalls. Now, keep in mind that just because a vendor um, is utilizing a case, they just might not have a lot of inventory to sell through and it makes more financial sense for them rather than having a large um, open air booth to have a smaller case. Uh, again, here we're seeing a lot of smalls. We have some Disney stuff here. These immediately caught my eye. They are in a Dresden style. They, I believe they're actually finger bowls versus what we would typically now call a trinket dish. Uh, they were priced at $10 each. Uh, again, keep in mind I said style. Um, the Dresden pieces have a little bit more refinement to them. Below that, we are seeing this four piece. They have it marked as a luster wear. It is obviously in a shell pattern. This is, in fact, Royal Bayreuth. Um, it is one of my most favorite uh, antique ceramic porcelain companies. Um, that is a more contemporary item, though, from them. Again, we've got lots of jewelry, and this vendor really really had it going on because they had smurfs tucked everywhere if you've been with me long enough you know i absolutely love the smurfs i actually don't have that guitar smurf i'm surprised i left him behind loving the little valentine's day one those great little composite like 60s 70s anthropomorphic banks we got a whole collection of other smurfs down here any of the ones that i am seeing that i would have wanted i, I already have truth be told <laughs> Like I said, I have a lot of Smurfs. I actually don't have this Chef Smurf. So here we're headed into another part of the upstairs, or main level, I should say. Keep in mind, it is going to get a little bit noisier until we head downstairs because there is, in fact, a diner. Um, here, of course, we're seeing some milk glass. I actually did like that covered candy dish. I thought it, it was a good shape to it. Um, again, I'm all for the milk glass, but you really want to keep your eye out for unusual pieces, uh, sculpts that you've not sim seen before. Here we've got some aluminum um, spice jars. It's only $14.99 for the set of four. I honestly completely forgot about these. We have the sugar and flour that are priced individually. These do have like a copper tone finish to the top. Um, they are made marked in Italy. The interior condition was pretty good. Um, I don't know if I would feel comfortable storing my flour, but perhaps something in a bag would, would have worked out well. But I did leave those behind. Loving this parsimon glass here or amberina glass um, as the case may be. I do believe that it's a Viking or Ellie Smith. I am loving the rippled effect to it. It has very much an aquatic feel to it. Or let's say that it has a very sun feel to it, almost like the surface of the sun. We're getting a real close up there of some uranium glass. And of course, down below, we do have cobalt mixed in with clear. Um, now that it almost looked like 
uh, porcelain with that lenticulated uh, the, or the punch out there. Um, well, no, maybe it is. It could be a Westmoreland piece. I'm unsure. We have a beautiful milk glass single epern. Unfortunately, that had a great pattern um, and it's very specific. And quite frankly, the pattern is rather common. Um, so while the sculpt was in fact unusual, a single stem epern, I did decide to leave that one behind. We've got a great Fenton piece here, uh, the winged sw swans. It is double. Uh, there are two swans on the handle, making it a double swan. This vendor is new to me. There is a lot of vintage uh, kind of retro -y toys here. We've got some Power Rangers and G.I. Joes, a little Ghostbusters and X-Men. We've got some superheroes down here, the Hulk and Hawkman. I was obsessed with the Hawkman, that particular action figure when I was little. Um, I love the fact that he had wings and he could fly. And again, we've got some more retro toys down here, but my heart belongs to, that is right, the Masters of the Universe. Truth be told, I actually have that dinosaur. He put your little He-Man figures in there and it kind of was like a little carrying case. Yeah, it was a figure all at the same time, but I have him, so why didn't get him? <laughs> Alrighty, up next we do have this, and I'm not going to attempt to pronounce it. It is an Italian pottery with the spaghetti on there. Super cute. The price is at retail, so we did decide to leave him behind. Tucked back there, we have the Vantellen little huggy bears. And then look at this little, very unusual and funky, I would say it's a little freaky, um, Murano style, right? Or I'm going to call it an art glass cat. Look at those eyes. <laughs> Now here we have got some little kind of made in Japan, little bunny pixies, if you will, with, with the little chenille bodies. Those are super cute, very desirable today. Um, lots of original or vintage uh, trolls. These aren't like the 80s, 90s, the rust. These are the dam trolls, D-A-M. Um, I believe it was a German or, or Swiss company. I could be completely wrong on that. Uh, but they were the original manufacturers of them. And we see the pinup cards back there. I was very interested in those. But again, these are in a case. Now, I did at this point because I, I very much wanted those pinup cards. Um, I started to look for somebody to open the cases and um, I couldn't find anybody. So on my way up, to the front, this booth did catch my eye, and we've got a beautiful Mosser Amberina glass dove back there in the back. Um, it is very fairly priced. I think it was only $6.25, and I do end up picking that piece up. We've got some cranberry coin dot. Oh, look here, a little Boyd's Vaseline bird. I picked that. It was $2.50. Of course I'm going to pick that up at $2.50. And let me tell you what, that thing, woo uranium rich that thing glows like nobody's business but here we're getting a close-up of the mosser and i did find somebody to let me in but by the time i did i literally the guy that had found him first got him over to this cabinet and took the pinup cards i kid you not i was so mad so mad uh, up next i'm going to show you guys here a florence ceramics this one is marked vivian vivian is her name um, and it was 25 percent off everything and i was like you gotta be kidding me right now um do you see the parasol the stem to the parasol the handle that is usually like 90 percent of the time broken and at that price with 20 percent off i said heck yeah but when we got her out i don't know if you can see it on the back there the back of her bow is completely broken off. Um, it is still a relatively good deal for a casual collector, maybe somebody that is very interested in the piece but isn't overly fussed with a little bit of damage. Next to her, we are seeing, of course, our lady here in the ruffles. That is one heck of a hairdo, I gotta say. Now I'm gonna switch over to total voiceover at this point because the music was bumping back here. I typically don't come to the back of the street of shops because this is filled with more of kind of like the new stuff made to look old or kind of like the um, the new farm house kind of stuff. So I typically don't come back, but I'm glad I did because this appears to be um, a new vendor, at least new to me, and they really took a lot of pride in their uranium depression glass. They even included a UV flashlight. Unfortunately, yeah, the batteries died, but I mean, A for effort. How thoughtful is that, that you would even think to put it on? Um, so that is pretty cool. So we didn't get anything to light up today, but... Anyhow, at the top, we do have some Ellie Smith here. We've got a little Fenton, that hobnail basket. 
Uh, they marked it as depression glass. Um, 35, pardon me, 25 for the basket, 38 for the banana boat. Those aren't really bad prices. Um, I think there is a tiny bit of meat on the bone, more so with the basket than the banana boat. Uh, but I did elect to leave those behind. I do have quite a bit of inventory right now. Um, so I'm being very selective in the pieces that I'm picking up. And not only just the pieces that I pick up, but the price point that they are at. Now I did see these absolutely, it's an Amberina day here. These are Ellie Smith. It does say that they're uranium. It does contain cadmium that will actually make them for fluoresce. Two for 75, I think is a pretty darn good deal for a collector. However, as a reseller, I elected not to get them. I think with the, um, the swung vases, at least so far as the market that I am working in, and it is a niche market, um, I think that the swung vases have gotten a little oversaturated, so the demand uh, isn't there. I think if you're on the West Coast or kind of like in the desert region like Arizona, Colorado, um, swung vases, that mid-century look is really still commanding a very high value. So again, it's just one of those things, the market, the platform in which you are choosing to sell on, um, as well as your buyers, you know. They even had coffee. What? Now, there was a little coffee left, but I decided not to do it because I was filming and it makes it very difficult. All right, guys, we are obviously headed downstairs um, to the, the basement. Um, and right off the bat, I do see this beveled art glass. Now, it does look like it could be Swedish, though I will say that the colors are a little bit watered down. Um, the price was not right for me. Um, typically, you're going to find that the color saturation is much, much deeper on these particular pieces if they're original Swedish glass. Um, that one, like I said, the color was a little diluted, so it kind of had me a little weary. Um, the weight and the color, or the clarity quality was really good. We, of course, have got some little opalescent here. Again, price was not where I would want it to be. Um, however, what I did what did catch my eye was this little bird on nest with the stem. I love it. It was only 923. I thought it was absolutely adorable. Cobalt glass has got a great color and it is a color that you can use throughout the year and even for holidays. It was an unusual piece, the sculpt I've never seen. I love the sawtooth um, edging to the lid as well as the base. So I definitely picked that one up. We've got a little art glass hummingbird here in a green iridescent glass. Um, he does appear that I think that his little hook was broken off. So you'd kind of have to display him like that, which I thought was a little awkward. Could be a little morbid. Like, oh, welcome to my house. Here's some dead hummingbirds. You know, that kind of was the vibe it was giving off. I didn't know if that would really be a thing. So... <laughs> Alrighty, we did find some amber glass. These are Leo Ward produced by Titan Glass. Um, and I kind of was hemming and hauling because I felt like the price was a little high. I know people have asked specifically for this colorway. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to go ahead and take a chance. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get both. Don't worry, I'm not leaving anything behind. I just had to pick up a basket and the baskets are like two feet from me. The cards wasn't going to happen again because I would have been, I'm getting that. <laughs> Put it down. It's mine great mid-century pattern there with that diamond and that pink and black that is excellent um here we go we're getting a close-up of one of the leo ward birds unfortunately his little beak was chipped off however the other one we're having a hard time focusing he's down i'm, I'm trying it's there there we go we are going to get him up next we do have a piece that has penciled on ussr and it is in fact a united soviet i forget what it stands for um <laughs> It's $8. It's a great piece of very folk art kind of look to it. Um, obviously it is burnt in and then very, very bright colors have been applied. Unusual piece, unusual subject matter. So I did pick it up. $8, I thought was a good deal on it. Here we're headed into another booth. This one, I believe this vendor has been here for a good, a good while. Um, it's kind of, they've changed the overall aesthetic or the shelving units of it. I'm seeing a lot of contemporary or more vintage inspired pieces. However, this Flash Gordon LP or vinyl record really caught my attention. It obviously is in a frame um, and it is a 
it's an original broadcast, a tele or yeah, television, hello, radio broadcast. Um, now it's not like an original, original at twelve dollars. It's a really good price um, for a collector, but for me, I was like, oh, I'm gonna leave that one behind. Typically, anywhere from fifteen to about to about twenty five dollars. Of course, that's gonna depend on the condition. It being in a frame, I really couldn't tell. So I wasn't overly in love with it. We're seeing some very bright blue fruits and vegetables here. Um, those are molded. Those are not hand blown. And there is a pretty substantial seam line uh, specifically to the grapes. Um, that's not to say that those things are valueless, but they are not as valuable as the hand blown pieces. Now, talking about handmade, look at this super um, angry <laughs> alien. It's an alien cat, very mid-century. It is a hand-carved piece of wood. I looked this one up utilizing Google image search as well as eBay image search. He goes for about anywhere, of course, depending on the lister, from 40 to about $65. And at 12 bucks, I decided to take a risk and pick him up. I think he would look great with your swung glass faces. And I love that mixing up the different elements. You know, if you have some brass, add some wood and glass and you're creating a very bohemian look. Um, talk about a look. This little pirate, he did not wear his training bra when he was younger. Um, bless him. He, in fact, is from Wales. It is Wales Ceramics. It is a made in Japan piece. The subject matter is most definitely... <laughs> unusual uh price that <laughs> it's a fat pirate um priced at 15 dollars uh i kind of want do you see his little hook arm he is missing an earring there um uh, i thought that i really liked it but i'm not buying for myself i have to keep others in mind and while i think people definitely would have gotten a laugh out of it he just yeah so here we do have a very beautiful piece of Viking glass and it was $3.99, it said as is. And I was like, what? And I was like, whoa. Yeah, no, not trying to slice ourselves up. Um, again, it's a piece where if it was a casual collector, hey, go for it at $3.99, why not? Um, truth be told, is it gonna sit on your shelf and you're not gonna be using it as a candy dish? Are you ever gonna see the chips or the cracks? No, are you gonna know it's there? Probably. Um, so it's one of those one of those uh, questions, you know, is the four dollars worth it? Some great yellow glass. Now, this is not Vaseline glass. Um, the Vaseline glass, while it is, in fact, a yellow hue, it typically has an undertone of green that can be seen very well in real life. Now, it doesn't always have that undertone, but 98 percent of the time you can see it course we've got some beautiful milk glass those are hand painted uh, the compote there had the little silver crest the little swung vase and those are again hand painted those would have been a Fenton piece um, sold the compote before did well with it um, but, but price wasn't where I necessarily need it to be up next we are seeing Huckleberry Hound he does in fact squeak um, air <laughs> He is marked, of course, Dell Toys. He is a Hanna Barbera, so it is an officially licensed piece, but there was no price on it. Up next is this beautiful Madonna and Child, or Mary and Baby Jesus, of course. I love this piece of chalkware. There are some condition issues insofar as there's paint paint flaking most specifically to mary's lip there um it wasn't so bad because the piece was so shiny so it kind of looked like a uh, like a light refraction to it um but it very much is like a piece that reminded me of being in the catholic church as a young person this figural piece is really interesting that would have typically been produced during prohibition um the interesting thing was was that from the front it very much looked like a figural piece however you could pop your liquor in there and of course it would have had a little uh, cork bottom to it and turn it around and boom so if you ever got raided you know you had your liquor in the curio cabinet and it was kind of easier to kind of pass undetected though i will say a lady holding a giant wine bottle isn't that inconspicuous you know what i'm saying but you know a uh, great piece um, at 1625 i honestly given the subject matter as well as the fact of the history probably was a little room i could have picked that one up um oh look a junk jar i mean literally everybody is doing a junk jar now we're for it i mean hey why not um <laughs> she I, there was some good stuff in there but i did leave that one behind 
Up next, we've got some Fontanini. Now these guys do say Depost Italy, made in Italy. And underneath the Italy, there is what is referred to as the spider mark. And that does indicate that they are in fact Fontanini originals. You're like composite um, material, kind of like a plastic slash resin. At $5 each, I did decide to go ahead and pick them up. Now headed down further into the basement, we I spotted that beautiful prairie green glaze. This of course is a, a Francoma piece. It is a serving piece. It does have a terracotta bottom and I'm trying to balance everything. I was like, Michael, just turn the camera off. So we of course have our lid and underneath again, the terracotta with that Francoma uh, incised mark on it. So I do pick this piece up at only $12.25. Here they have a green vase. This is marked at $8. Now I am unsure as to the maker of it. The glass is paper thin, so it very much is reading bohemian, almost a French art glass feel to it. I am loving the Jasper Ware effect to it. And looking at the paint, it is done exceptionally well. Um, you can kind of see how it's thinned out to create shading. So at eight bucks, I do decide to pick this up. Then what caught my eye was this, and I love it. It's called a white ruffle bowl. Uh, it is in fact, and at $3, I was like, what are you serious? Um, this piece is in fact a stangle piece. Now it doesn't have the highest resale value, but I thought at three bucks, I'll pick it up until I saw the hairline crack. And I was like, oh, whatever. Now, this is a really great piece. This is actually um, from a manufacturer called DeForest, and they were 1950s pottery company out of California, and he is super judgy. Uh, go ahead, make a pig out of yourself. Super like passive aggressive judging. Um, he does have a marking here on the back. It's exceptionally difficult to see. Uh, it wasn't a very deep mark, so heck yeah, we're going to pick him up. Judgy judgers. Alrighty guys, that is it for today's video. Uh, we've got a basket full of goodies, plus the stuff that we got upstairs. I'm very pleased. I hope that you enjoyed. Um, and we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna wrap it up outside. See you there. Alrighty guys, well there you have it. Hopefully you had a good time in today's video. I think that we found some fun stuff. I am really digging that wooden cat rocking the child. That's weird. And not to mention that super judgy cookie jar or biscuit jar or sweet jar, judgy jar. It's judgy jar. That's what it is. So guys, hopefully you got some laughs. Again, I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget, if you've made it this far and you're not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe. If you are, make sure that you hit that thumbs up button. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know what your favorite find of the day was. I would really appreciate that. And as always, guys, until next time, remember, keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.